Hey everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. I'm Jeremy. And this week, we were talking about the album <laughs> You're Dead by Flying Lotus. And also kind of sounding like we're trying to, to look down upon someone, perhaps. Maybe we're being a little pretentious. Condescending it's, is the word I was looking for. It's really because death is a it's a tough subject to breach, so I figured I'd, I'd have like a a kind it's kind of condescending but like more parental like talking, talking to a child yeah. or something <laughs> yeah. yeah which is very much condescending <laughs> very to condescending talk to our audience as if they're kids but yeah you're dead by by flying lotus it's yeah a, it's an album it's an album came out in 2014 it's a uh, pretty pretty cool at least i don't i don't know if everybody's likes i don't know if you like it i know you said at one point you had i think listen to it when it came out and it wasn't your style necessarily yeah. and i kind of had a similar experience like i listened to one i heard one song liked it and then came to the album and was like ah, i don't know if i'm ready for this yeah <laughs> yeah i it, my experience with flying lotus prior to this was pretty minimal I, I mentioned i think it was after the podcast or after we stopped recording last week that uh i think i first heard of flying lotus from gta games because yeah. he has Flylo Radio, and so I checked out his music around the time that this album came out, I think. Uh, and then I, I was kind of immediately put off. I was like, this is not for me. So <laughs> I, I, I don't even think I finished the album, to be honest. Uh, and then I just kind of never went back to it until now. And now now I've come back to it. I still had it. I never deleted the files, uh, so that was kind of nice. Because I, I feel like I was like, I knew that I could like it at some point. Yeah. And I just hadn't gone back to it, and I didn't want to just like throw it away. But yeah. Well, here we are. Yeah, at the time this album came out with or came out, I had really only listened to like his earlier, I guess, more electro stuff like Cosmo Grandma and I I heard a song from him called Puppet Talk that was it was a while ago. It's uh like I got a sample of Eric Satie's Jim Nopides. I don't know. I it's French. <laughs> It's oh, French, of course, and I can't speak French anymore. Joey, you took well, four years of, of French, right? Yeah, but if I try to pronounce it, I sound like a fucking idiot. <laughs> I just can't pronounce it. Well, at, le at least you can read it, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. But so this album, I picked it, uh, and the theme of it is death. So killed it. <laughs> We're gonna... killed it. You caught me off guard. <laughs> I'm sure you noticed because I probably that was probably audible the noise that I made. <laughs> Track number one is theme. I Stand called an audible sideways. and you made an audible noise. Boom! There you go, nailing it. Even though the yeah, track number one theme <laughs> <laughs> immediately it, it's got some like dramatic psychedelic suspense. I mean, it's an intro track and it, it does that very well. And I just felt like I was kind of like walking into some sort of like East Asian temple kind of a thing where there's Ooh. like incense lit and stuff like that. And then this electronic jazz fusion stuff hits in, in, a, in a burst of energy and it, it kind of it contrasts with the serenity of, of the calm that I was just describing. And I respect it and I understand <laughs> it. Oh, shit. But you already know where this is going. Yep. <laughs> but I don't like it. it. It's, I don't know, that, that fusion, the loud chaos and, and just like... It doesn't sound musical enough to my to my senses, I suppose. Not to say that it isn't music, because again, I t I get it, but it's not for me. And yeah. I, I think that's it's a similar reaction to what I had when I initially heard this album back in 2014. Well, you know what? I think that's that's just peachy. Then I guess. <laughs> now we have to go through 18 more tracks. <laughs> Hell yeah! Well, I yeah. like it. I like it though. So I'm glad. All you people out there really wondering how I feel about it. I came around to this album a little a little bit ago. So a little bit ago? How long yeah. ago? When did you come back to this and be like, yes, this works? Um I'd say maybe like two years ago, probably. I okay. think it was around twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen I was kind of having like a reawakening in my like I had been in a musical rut, I felt like for a while. Yeah. So I was just like trying old things that I wasn't too sure of i was trying new listening to new things so and then it kind of just worked out but yeah i like the jazz fusion like how it starts off with like what sounds like it could be like 
a funeral bell or something. I mean, it starts yeah. off. He's said that he he wants you to imagine that you die the second this album starts and kind of like that's the journey afterwards. So it's like the funeral bells and then the panic is the jazz fusion where it's like yeah. everything's just going nuts. I kind of I kind of get that and I kind of come back to it later in my notes just like because it's not the, the whole album isn't that like jazz fusion stuff. Yeah. It it's it has it experiments in a lot of spread out like jazzy elements and hip hop elements and a lot of stuff around that. Uh so maybe it's not super indicative of my feelings on the album, but Ooh. yeah, I just I really don't like that the kind of electronic fusion jazz stuff. It's it's like fucking Sungazer, I don't think I would ever, I would be into because it's it's pretty much all that, right? I like Sungazer. I know you do, <laughs> and I, I don't blame you. I think Adam Neely is a and and what is it, Sean Sean Cr- Crowder and, and yeah, I think whoever else is in that band. They're they're all phenomenal musicians. It's they make wonderful music, but it's not my kind of music. Uh, like I, I just I don't know. Every time I listen to it, I feel like I'm just like getting shocked by some sort of Tesla coil. <laughs> What what about uh, whenever you listen to track number two on this album? What do you feel like then? <laughs> I feel like it's it's titled as Tesla. Yep, and then that's it's, like, it's, like it's probably the truest truest thing you could have said. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this one starts with this like snare brushing that that comes up a lot in in jazz music a lot in general, but also on this album it kind of comes back a few times where he's just like brushing the snare and then tapping it, so it kind of gives this like train chugging feel. Mm-hmm. to it and then the guitar kind of runs around and it's flanked by some like very vibey keys and stuff and i think vibey is really just the best <laughs> descriptor for this track because it, it just i don't know it's it's cool it's got a lot of a lot of vibes in it and it just i don't know it, it kind of goes off the rails a little bit at the end as the guitar kind of fiddles around and loses control but uh yeah I, I, I like this track more than theme i'll say yeah i i like this track uh I mean, I like theme, but this track, it like kind of comes in on the, out of the frantic note of theme and it, it has those like, what are they, I guess they're called brushes or yeah. for the drumming, but I, I like it and it keeps that. They're like, like, they're like steel brushes that you slide around on the snare head and then, sh- 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 yeah, sh- <laughs> very, very, very that sound. <laughs> but, uh, this one, it gets like it keeps like the bass soloing and stuff but it, i feel like it gets a little bit more groovy and like where the panic is what ended theme this one turns into like a ride like it's yeah. a ride through the panic so the panic is still all around you i guess but it's like you're on a more focused track towards wherever you're going <laughs> towards hell yeah the towards, afterlife to, yeah whatever afterlife or underworld or whatever that he's leading towards in this album and as far as the keys go, it's got Herbie Hancock on keys. Yeah. And he's a pretty cool dude. And uh, just just so I can throw in another person that uh, you didn't have too fond of feelings of, he, him and Jacob Collier are pretty good <laughs> friends. Yeah, I actually saw the... I guess it was Wired. I don't know. There, some YouTube that I'm not subscribed to does like... Uh, five levels of explaining a concept with from mm-hmm. a professional or whatever. And I think Jacob Collier was doing one with like five levels of explaining music theory or, or harmonization. I think it was harmony. Yeah. Was the, the vague concept of harmony or whatever. And then the final, they, they go through tiers, right? So you start with like a little kid and then go up to like a teenager and then an adult and then a professional and then a God tier. <laughs> then Herbie Hancock. And Herbie <laughs> Hancock is, is the God tier figure in the, in that, that video. Which yeah. I mean, Herbie Hancock's cool. I don't have any any issues with him at all. Good. He's a cool guy. He's a very talented musician. I think Jacob Collier is also very talented, but again, not my not my cup of tea. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I mean, I, I don't I don't agree with you, but I feel you. <laughs> sure. You respect my well, maybe respect's a strong word. Yeah. You accept my opinion. Yeah, there we go. As as my opinion. <laughs> yeah. But uh if you ever try to take away any of that music from me, man, you better pry it from my cold dead hands. I will try my best not to take that music from you <laughs> cuz we're going to keep talking about it. Like on track number 3, Cold Dead. Boom 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 boom. Oh yeah, I meant to mention that Thundercat plays bass if I hadn't already. You he hadn't. Is- Okay, Thundercat, he's the bass player for all these six solos. He's not like, he's credited in one of the songs as like a featured artist because he sings, but he's right. the bass player here. So. Okay, curious, because uh, I didn't look into this, 
is there also electric guitar being played? Because there's there's this what I described as a guitar in uh, some songs on this album that I wasn't sure if it was just like a guitar or if it was a bass being played up on like the, the high notes, you know, with a lot of distortion and stuff. That it, it was it was kind of in a middle ground for yeah. what my ear was picking up. So I wasn't sure if you knew. I don't know for sure. I was trying to find it out because there is there is guitar on this album, and I had the same question. But cool. I think on this song specifically, it's bass. After listening to it several times, I think it's him playing bass like up a register or something. When you say this song, you mean Tesla or Cold Dead? Uh, Cold Dead. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just want to be clear. Because yeah. we, we hadn't got into it. But now we're going to get into it. <laughs> this is way more electronic jazz fusion stuff that I, that I don't <laughs> like that was kind of teased at in theme. So it kind of got a little better. And then this one just kind of kind of goes downhill, I think. There are elements of it that I do like. There's like a, a crazy sax in it. And yeah. I, I really like the structure of the song and the progression of like the sound and stuff, but it, it's still very like chaotic and, and it's too scattered for, for my taste kind of in a similar way to Hella, right. Where it's <gasps> just like, I, th I think I'm learning that that's just something that I don't like in music where there's just so much happening and so much bouncing around, but I also like some shoegazy stuff. So I, I don't know. Th there's a distinction there obviously, but like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm still feeling it all out. I think. Yeah, and, and this if it sounds too busy for me. Yeah, I was honestly wondering at what point I knew a hella was coming in on this album. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. at which point because, and I mean, like I get it. I've heard there's been plenty of things where, like, even whenever I was getting back in, getting into hella back originally, I would like I'd listen to it a few times, and I was just like, what the fuck's going on here? And then, like, I'd listen to it and like it a little bit more. And then I'd watch, uh, like, other, like, just their live stuff and everything. And it was like, I don't know. I heard it described a lot as jazz shoegaze. And yeah. not necessarily like they were playing jazz music, but they were coming at it from that sort of approach, I guess. Right. And so I can, I can see the through line there. Uh, and it is, like, this is, it starts off with, like, that distorted could be electric guitar could be bass thing right i feel like with that sound it gets more of a prog rock sound at the beginning Definitely. and then yeah it kind of continues in with that like fusion jazz type stuff but then towards the end it starts uh i don't know it like kind of floats upwards it seems like in the clouds whenever the sax is coming in there's like birds in the yeah. background and it's just it ends on a nice feel Whereas it started in kind of a crazy place. So maybe this is like some sort of transition to like some sort of peace, maybe. Yeah, I, I can see that. And again, I think it's, I mean, the album's called You're Dead, right? I'll, and the track's called Cold Dead and stuff. And, and you mentioned that that's kind of the theme of the album is <laughs> dying and then going through the the next moments of your life or not life but death, I guess, your afterlife <laughs> kind of thing. And I did pick up on those themes, but not until, like, track six. Yeah. So I, I didn't make any notes for these first, like, five tracks or whatever about it, but it definitely started to click as I got deeper into the album. that Because that, I, I didn't know that going in. I should have assumed that it's called You're Dead with the tracks <laughs> being labeled as they are, that there's some kind of thing. But I was, I was just, like... I was off put by a lot of the jazz fusion stuff. I'm just like, man, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like thinking about the sound yeah. that, that I'm hearing because it's not entertaining to me. And then as the album kind of progressed, I kind of like got into more comfortable territory with it. And then I was able to like open my mind, I guess a bit more about what the songs meant, even if there weren't lyrics or even when there were lyrics kind of a thing. Yeah. I think, uh, cause the first song I heard had lyrics from this album anyways, mm -hmm. So I, that was like, I kind of had that context going in, but yeah, without it, I mean, even though the songs are called cold dead and whatnot <laughs> and the, <laughs> I was, I'm going to wait fucking dead, <laughs> fucking dead. I was going to wait for the segue, but track four is called fucking dead, <laughs> but it's FKN. Yeah. It's fucking <laughs> dead. Fucking <laughs> Dead, man. like some 13 year old trying to halfway censor themselves but still <laughs> yeah. still say the word yeah exactly <laughs> which i mean yeah 
I mean, I did that whenever I was a teenager. Be like, that's or like the freaking thing. Where frick. You're like, frick, man. Like frick, Elliot from man. Scrubs. I have not seen so much of Scrubs. Oh, well, never mind. Like some other reference that you would get that I can't think of right now. That's what I'll put there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Track number four. Fucking dead. This one immediately has a better groove for me and it has a much more chill vibe. So this is the part where, you know, he, they, they've breached the skyline, so to say, and they've gone into this new area. And I really like this more chill vibe. And I was kind of thinking about it while I was making my notes. Like, what is it about the, the prior tracks that I don't really like? And I think overall it's the pacing that kind of separates it and the drums obviously having a big impact on the pacing or, or the feel like a lot of the earlier stuff where it's jazzy and fusion. It's, it feels very rushed and very like motioned, I suppose. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like it, it's just like pushing you through a doorway, right. Or constantly just like throwing you somewhere. Whereas it, the stuff's more chill and, and less pressure and less like, anxiety i guess for me yeah where it's just kind of kind of kind of floating around and I, I really like it yeah i like this track too i mean it's only 40 seconds long but it's got like a cool little funky groove thing going on and like these punchy drums that kind of i don't know they break into like i know that in in the context of this album the you're supposed to be dead but they almost yeah. remind me of like a heart's last beats that are like anxious and like how your heart would feel right before you're about to die. I know that's not really what would I would imagine they're going for. Yeah, on, I don't know. Here, I, but... I feel like there's some some merit in that, and that I don't know. I, I also feel like the chronology of this tra of the tracks kind of are a little bit loose, mm -hmm. where where some concepts that I would expect to be further in the story are not where they would be i guess chronologically for me so maybe there's a bit of like flashback stuff happening where where it introduces you say bam it's dead you're happening all this is happening so fast again with that kind of rushed feel of that kind of fusion stuff and, and the drums just pounding you through and then now you're like you're at a spot where you can kind of start to reflect and say what the fuck just happened yeah so maybe you're kind of like looking back on that yeah because that that would make sense because this song like I guess thematically I kind of thought of it as like the final acceptance that you're dead. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, this is where you're like, shit, I'm okay. I'm dead, dead. And, uh, I, and another thing that I was kind of thinking of is, uh, I, so flying Lotus, like in, I think it's, I don't know which EP it is off the top of my head, but, uh, maybe it was a full album, but he has a song called, I think it's called DMT song or something like that. So I know he has, he's kind of in that sphere. So I didn't know if like the first three tracks were kind of like where, where they say you see your life flash before your eyes right. where like as you're dying, like your brain is producing all this DMT to make like whatever the fuck's going on, process it in your head. Yeah. So you're kind of like, you're kind of not really there, not present. So I didn't know if the first three tracks were that and then fucking dead was like, it's called fucking dead because it's like you're you're back to reality and this is your final moment, I guess. Yeah. I kind of picked up on some, on some of that later on another track, which is kind of what I was saying about the chronology being mm -hmm. a little strange or a little, little blurry. And maybe I, I think I have some justification for it, but we'll, we'll get into that when we, when we get there, I suppose, because you're never going to catch me <laughs> talking about it when we get to, I don't know. I don't know if you keep there. skipping all, uh, skipping ahead all like that, I'm, I'll am i never catch you, man. There you go. Something like that. <laughs> that was the segue one take. We are, that's that's going in our script for this episode. Yeah, our script, yeah, that we were totally right. <laughs> <laughs> Track number five, Never Catch Me, featuring Kendrick Lamar. Ooh. Is this the first song you heard from this, this album? Yes. That makes sense because I, mean, I was I was very into Kendrick at the time. I mean, not that I'm not still, but it was like when I was just still super like looking for all the new stuff and being like, "Is there right. anything that I missed or whatever?" And I found like this had come out pretty recently. Whenever I was looking it up, and I was like, "Ah!" Then I heard this, and I was like, "That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool." And then checked out the rest of the album, and was like, ah, "I don't know if I'm ready." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's a fair assessment. This track does stand out a lot this is the first track on the album that i'm like this is good 
I yeah. really enjoy this this track. The bass groove, it's got some tight, clean drums, and it's got this smooth like organ kind of going on behind it. I really like it. Kendrick carries some of the the intense and chaotic energy from the more fusiony parts with just the the rhythm that he like speaks and and just like his delivery and stuff, which is kind of interesting. And the drums kind of follow that a little bit, but it's never like too much for me to enjoy. I think it, it kind of like it rides the line of, of being kind of too chaotic and too energetic. So to, to, it, it kind of like brings in some of those elements without overdoing it, I think. And then there's like the short solo section with the, the guitar question mark. That it's kinda, a bass. It's a bass. Okay. It's a bass. Yeah. That starts to cross the line for me where it's just, it's, I think it's a lot of arpeggios and stuff too. We're mm-hmm. just like constantly going and going and going. And it just, I don't know. I don't, this, it's a sound that I don't like, but that solo is kind of short lived. And then it mellows back to the more chill groove and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know. It has a lot of good in the song and then it kind of, kind of pushes the boundary for me on some spots. I feel you. I feel you. It's uh, I really like that bass solo, but it is like, it's just like I don't know, like flying past you. It's yeah. it's it's like really fast. <laughs> but uh, this song, it's uh, apparently I guess Flying Lotus had something to do with the first track off of To Pimp a Butterfly. Maybe he has more, but I oh, know he had something to do with Wesley's theory, which is the first track right. on To Pimp a Butterfly. But uh. So there was kind of that cross pollination there, and maybe that year did to Pimp a Butterfly come out? I think that wasn't it, until much later, right? I thought it was 2014, 2015, because really? I thought Good Kid. I, th- I think Good Kid Get Mad City was 2013, right? Was it 2013? I thought it was 2012. I don't actually know. Find out real quick. Yeah, you find out, but uh, it's I don't know. It's just super cool. Like you described, Pimp a really Butterfly well. was 2015. 2015. Good Kid Mad City was 2012. Okay. So it was off by year. And I was off by a year on To Pimp a Butterfly. Look at us. We're just trading years over here. One. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But yeah like, so it was a year later. Yeah. So it, it's not out of the realm of closeness, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, this one, like, I don't know. I I really like just the jazz fusion that goes on. Like, it, it does kind of sound like, not necessarily this fast paced, but like, the type of stuff that you would hear on to pimp a butterfly. And I, I really like yeah. that album. So it kind of like works for me. Uh, but I, my, I'd say as much as I like Kendrick's part and everything, I do really like the end of it. Cause it kind of ends with like this really fuzzy synth that feels like, I guess the final, final descent into right. whatever afterlife or what it like he, it's, he's finished working through death, I guess at this point. So yeah, and, and lyrically, it kind of reflects that, I suppose. I, I don't know, it, it kind of, this one, it seemed a little out of place for me, because he, he's, it's Kendrick talking about how he's done good and bad, and he's kind of, like, resolving that, right, where, in my perspective of listening to this album, because, again, at this point, I, I wasn't fully, like, aware of the concept of the album, I suppose, but it, it seemed more that, like, he was still alive, and he was hoping that the bad that he had done didn't catch up with him and, and didn't ruin the good that he has done and how he he's kind of like fearing that or i guess using the fear that all of his past misdeeds and and i guess using those using the fear of those deeds catching up with him i guess is what i'm trying to say to to be better right where, yeah where he's saying like man i fucked up and I don't want that to happen again. So in turn, I'm going to try to be better is the way I interpreted this in hindsight, knowing more about the concept of the album. I think it could also just be that, like that kind of looking back on your life and saying, man, I did some fucked up shit. I did some good shit. I guess we're going to see what happens next. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. I kind of like looked at it in a similar way, more of like you, you gain a certain perspective. I, I would imagine if you're in this position, like looking back on your life after dying, like where you look at some bad things you did and maybe you're like, ah, it wasn't like, I maybe it all wasn't as big as I made it, or maybe it was bigger than I made it out to be Mm -hmm. or something. And you're like, you're understanding more of like the mysteries of the universe type thing. And then realizing your part in it and what you've done in your life and hoping that you're, you're judged accordingly. I like, type stuff and uh i do like the way he ends his verse with just like 
the quick bitch you're dead like he yeah. just ends it and he's like like that's why i feel like this is the full realization like once he says that he's it's like the moment that it clicks in whatever consciousness you have and then the bass solo is like the slide downward i guess right i i I can see that and I kind of agree with that, but I also think that some of that stuff is still being sorted out mm -hmm. in the next track, which yeah. is, is Dead Man's Tetris. We're just going to go into it because like lyrically on, on Dead Man's Tetris, it it's Flylo, which he, he goes by Captain Murphy, I guess, when he's rapping <laughs> for whatever reason. But uh, so him and Snoop Dogg are on the song and they're, they're just chilling, right? They're talking about how they're dead, just kind of existing in the afterlife. But there's also a lot of like, at least what I took to be like implied confusion, both with like the chaotic and weird music and then with the lyrics themselves, like it, it, and along with the, the title being dead man's Tetris, it kind of like made me think that, okay, well the protagonist has died, right? Philo has died or whatever this character is, has died. And now he's trying to put the pieces together, kind of like Tetris, right? Where the pieces are falling, you're just kind of, kind of place them and sort them. So I feel like this is still kind of, him figuring out like what's actually happening and, and what that leaves him with, I guess, now that he's dead, I suppose. See, I took this as the arrival to whatever afterlife he was in, but most of that comes from the second verse where he's talking about like hanging out with other like dead artists yeah. where he's talking about like hanging out with like Jay Dilla and Austin Peralta and Freddie Mercury. And, but yeah, it, it still could be sorting through some stuff i mean because my it was it was mainly based off that second verse and not really based off of i guess the first and third verses where it's like yeah because snoop dogg's verse is like referencing a gun that could have either he killed somebody or somebody killed him or right. like not knowing exactly what killed him or like still trying to figure like there's still mystery to it so yeah, still I mean, I trying think, to figure stuff out. I think we're both right in that, like, it's kind of a progressive track where the first verse, he's saying hold up a whole lot, and he's, like, asking questions, and he's kind of confused. So, like, he's arrived in, in this area. I don't, I don't want to say heaven or hell because I don't think it's either of those quite yet. But he's yeah. arrived in, in this afterlife kind of a thing where, and he's still, like, he has questions now. He's like, okay, like, I'm dead. What does that mean? Like, what? It, what's going on in the first verse and the second one he's like wait a minute there's all these other people here i, I guess i'm dead because otherwise these people wouldn't be here and i i would be <laughs> here, so like whatever I, I might as well accept it and then verse three maybe snoop dogg is some kind of oracle figure where he's kind of explaining what had <laughs> happened to to uh the the character where the character's like man like i guess i'm just gonna enjoy myself and snoop dogg's like yo did you see what the fuck happened to you? Because <laughs> this is what the fuck happened to you. Kind I'm telling thing. you right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think there's just, it's a self-contained story in itself, yeah. I suppose, which was redundant to say in itself. <laughs> but yeah, I, I feel like we were both kind of in the right place. Just didn't piece it all together. Hell yeah, we're both right. And Snoop Dogg's here. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, Snoop, it, it was weird to to hear Snoop Dogg because I don't know Snoop Dogg has a very distinct sound. Yes, and his his flow is very distinct, and it's very Snoop Dogg. Like nobody can replicate Snoop Dogg, which uh, kudos to him for for having such a pronounced style. For but real, he, were you gonna say more oh, about Snoop Dogg? No, I was just gonna say like he's. I I was gonna put in that. Uh, Listening to this song and hearing Snoop Dogg in it always makes me want to listen to all of Plastic Beach just yes. because Snoop Dogg is on Plastic <laughs> Dude, Beach. For real. So musically, this track is very gorillas gorillas esque, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It has a lot of like boops and a lot of layers of like samples and effects. It's kind of a weird sound, and it it definitely reminds me a lot of Gorillas, but maybe with a bit more of like a chaotic twist to it. I don't hate it, but I also don't really love it musically. Yeah. But it, it definitely pulled my mind in the Gorillas aspect, <laughs> especially with Snoop Dogg in it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's a nice, it, it's a weird track. I'll I'll go ahead and say that. Yeah. Like, I'm not gonna say that I would be out here just like bumping this this track on its own in right. in my car or something. But in the context of this album, I definitely like it being here. So. Agreed. I, I think it, it serves its purpose. And I, I don't think there's any track on this album that I would play as a single. Like, I think this is an album that if I was going to listen to it, I would listen to the entire thing. Yeah. And I mean, I 
at least it's not too long. Like if you're going to do that, it's only 38 minutes. It's not like a crazy right. for being 19 tracks long. Like, <laughs> yeah. The, the average is around two minutes per yeah. track, which uh, it's not, not bad. You know, what's probably longer than 38 minutes though. <laughs> uh, a turkey dog coma. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens when you eat too many turkey dogs oh you shit yeah it is i was thinking of some sort of weird turkey dog like combo animal like some abomination going into a coma but i think you're probably more right i mean i've never had a turkey dog but i assume they exist they do exist they definitely exist i've eaten several <laughs> <laughs> well i've eaten track number seven turkey dog coma several times this week as well nice. by eating i've mean listen to because you don't need music yeah eating with your ears ear eating <laughs> new podcast name. hell ear yeah eats. that's dangerously close to a, a Rhett and link podcast so <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna... true. very true <laughs> anyways this one has some like weird echo loops that are kind of overlaid giving a very kind of glitchy sounding intro to the song and then it finds a bit of melody and structure when the the again the guitar question mark slash bass mm-hmm. kind of comes in the distorted instrument kind of comes in and then it mellows out a lot and then it just kind of coasts for a bit and then the drums kind of come back in they kickstart the the waning energy of the song and it gets very like fast and chaotic again with saxophone and then the bass and then it kind of fades back out and it's just kind of this the struggle and i thought that like maybe this is representing the protagonist's death and attempted resuscitation so like maybe he's in a hospital like his physical body's in a hospital and they're trying to like shock him back to life or it could maybe be him struggling to like maybe find a way out of the afterlife where he's like he's he's there and he's like i've got to get back to my body i've got to get back to my life because this is not where i want to be right now kind of thing that's that's what i drew from it yeah i kind of i think i went off the off the rails a little bit not necessarily off the rails as in like it couldn't be right but like maybe a little outside of what was originally intended uh because yeah it starts off kind of with these i think it's a guitar like i don't know if that's true but okay. it reminds me of like a buckethead song so my mind yeah. in- instantly goes to guitar it does have a very similar tone yeah like especially one of the more kind of out there buckethead songs uh and then this one like after the kind of craziness from the last song it like starts on like a little bit of a break it's kind of not necessarily easy listening, but compared to re- the rest of the album, it's got like that more chill stripped yeah. back for the first half. But then on the end, the drums kind of pick back up and it gets like jazzy as fuck near the end. Bro, <laughs> Bro guess what? I, I was sorry. This is this is going to blow your mind. Oh, I was, shit. I was looking at Genius, right, for this track because I was curious. Brendan Small played the guitar on this track. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So I, I'm wondering, now that I look at that, I realize that that's probably why I downloaded this album in the first place. is because I think <laughs> Brendan Small probably talked about it, because that sounds very familiar to me now. Oh my god. For all you people out there who don't know, Brendan Small is the, the man, the legend behind <laughs> Metalocalypse, Death Clock. He, he plays most of the instruments, I think, other than yeah. drums. I mean, he plays the guitar and the bass and sings, well, sings, vocals, does vocal work for death clock Clock and and galacticon and stuff like that galacticon check it out (laughs) that's our weekly death clock metalocalypse plug (laughs) yeah (laughs) until they give us the movie that they teased so that's exciting but that's for another that's another time (laughs) yeah but this this is so where i was going with this track is that like i kind of thought it was like a a toss-up between the people that are still living maybe having a panic or like Maybe he, the person is starting to accept it, but then remembers that facet of they're like, oh shit, like I have family or people that care about me that are still right. alive. And it causes another panic, like you were saying, like it's, they're still fighting it or something. Yeah, I think it could also be from the perspective of, of someone still living, because I kind of picked up on that a couple, in a, a few tracks down the line, that maybe there is still that kind of pr- perspective that like, how does it affect the people that are still alive? Kind of yeah. Thing. So, I, I think it's possible. Well, we'll we'll just leave that one stirring around, trying to figure out the what what it actually means. But until yeah, then, we'll, we'll listen to track eight. We'll just stirring. <laughs> <laughs> we're killing it with these segues. We're like halfway through the album now. Hell yeah! We're gonna keep it going though. This one has some like acoustic guitar tracks, and one of them's kind of like reversed, which is a cool effect. Like I, 
whenever I hear like reversed samples and songs and stuff, it's always it's always cool. It's never not cool, in my opinion. Uh, it's kind of a peaceful track, but there's still a hint of like not total acceptance that I was picking up on that like it seemed like the character is is maybe seeing memories of his life flash before his eyes. So this is kind of where I drew that in, which is again why I think the the chronology of it all doesn't really line up with what I have. But maybe you can you can make some sense of it better than I can. Uh, may see I don't really know because it does have that acoustic guitar line. It's got like some awesome spacey and bassy effects in the background. I don't know if it's an acceptance track or if it's an empty track. Like yeah. if it's supposed to be like if we're going with maybe they're thinking in the last track how it affected the people that were living. Maybe it's like they realized that that emptiness comes or maybe the people who are still alive are feeling that void mm -hmm. maybe, but I, I, I don't know, man, with yeah, some of I, these, I think <laughs> just like with, with Turkey dog coma being at least from the perspective that I had, where it was like an attempted resuscitation thing where like he's in a hospital and they're shocking him and they're, they're trying to get him back to life. That this was like, he he's kind of on the brink of returning to consciousness. And so it's kind of like fluctuating and kind of like, He's in, in like a weird limbo kind of thing, but then in, end up, ends up losing that, that battle and does not resuscitate is the way I took it all, I guess. Yeah, well, either way, I mean, if if someone decided to not resuscitate it, he would probably get a, a visit from some sort of Terminator, maybe <laughs> maybe one that has a similar name to a Terminator in real life, Coronus <laughs> the Terminator. <laughs> Coronus the Terminator is track number nine. <laughs> This, this this is where the the album kind of got off got off track for me a bit, <laughs> I think. Because I mean, it's called it's called the Terminator. It's called Coronas the Terminator. It's yeah. got some more of those reverse samples and stuff, but this one feels very like somber and, and calm. I really love. There's a lot of like choral vocals and stuff in this one. The bass grooves, the the drums kind of follow that. But like lyrically, it, it's I, I did a little bit of reading on this on Genius, and it's literally about the Terminator the the fucking the real world movie <laughs> oh <laughs> but to me it like it seemed like it was the perspective of someone that was grieving the death of the protagonist where they want him to come back to life but at the same time they understand how awful the world is and then at the end they they said they're just gonna like bring him back or that they that if he does come back that they're just gonna kill him himself so there's kind of that like grieving aspect where like they're just angry they're frustrated they're confused they want them they want this character to come back to life but also they're pissed at the character for dying on them and leaving them so like even if they do come back to life they'll probably just kill them themselves kind of a thing was the vibe that i got from it yeah i got like a similar vibe where it's like not necessarily i don't know like where dying was the real relief and they were equating that to being saved how it starts off with uh what don't come back because i might just save you yeah like and they're they're at first thinking that they're like if you, if you find a way to come back i'm gonna save you from death and then they're not realizing that that was the real relief or the person who has died has already accepted death. Mm -hmm. And uh, then at the end, they realize that, I guess. And then they're like, don't come back because I might just kill you to put you at peace again. But yeah. the middle section of that, it, it, it would make more sense if they actually wrote this song about the Terminator. So <laughs> right. knowing yeah, I mean, that. It, it, it says the days of men are coming to an end, so come with me if you want to live, which is yeah. a direct quote from the Terminator, right? It's one of the most quoted Arnold quotes, I think. Yeah, I was wondering about that, but I kind of just thought like, I, yeah, it, it makes <laughs> complete sense. But <laughs> Right, yeah, it, it was intentional for sure. Uh, but musically... Uh, I, I like the vibe that this song pulls off. It's got like, I don't know, like it starts off with like a cool backward sound and what sounds like a bowed bass almost. And the vocals are just really smooth. It's, uh, Nikki Randa who is credited at some point later in the album. She is like kind of a female vocalist on this track. I mean, it's also, I think Flying Lotus and Thundercat are also doing like, they're doing like right. a trio thing. Cause it's kind of choral, I'd say, yeah. uh, but yeah, it's it's kind of just a smooth, nice little track, I think. But it's it's apparently about the Terminator, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I mean, I think it's still like we both drew the same 
or at least similar conclusions. So like it still fits in the narrative of the album, but Philo said that it was it was very heavily inspired by the Terminator and he just he wrote the song about the Terminator and I I guess he kind of he took it and wrote it in such a way that it still made sense within the context of this album. So kudos to him for writing a song about the Terminator in an album about being dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I it's, it, you know, it's just like a, I guess a siren song for the Terminator that could be playing as he's sticking his thumb up, falling into the lava in that one iconic or not lava molten, molten metal. That's what it was. I'm going to be honest with you. I've not seen the Terminator, but I understand that reference. So I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna get upset with you about that because the Terminator is actually a movie I don't really care one way or the other about. I kind of just saw it because it was like yeah. somebody was like, it "Oh was my god, you have to watch. see it!" Yeah. But Siren Song is track number ten. You segued masterfully, and then I was just like, "I've got to come clean." <laughs> the, the, the weight of the world watching me not respond to your Terminator reference. I appreciate the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so this one, it's it's featuring uh, Angel Deridurian, I think, on, on is, is how it's pronounced. That looks but, right. I don't know. But yeah, it's got some, some wind chimes and some other like ambient noise for a bit. The beat and the bass and the Y kind of guitar comes in. It's very floaty. And this is the point where I was like, okay, maybe, maybe the protagonist has gone to heaven. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's accurate because of things later in the album but th at this point it was like okay it's very floaty it's very like light it seems like he's he's in a very heavenly place kind of thing it returns the snare brushing kind of chugging but it's mixed very low so it's not like super driven by that sound where it, it was kind of earlier in the album which is nice but yeah it's a pretty pretty lovely floaty song yeah like it does it has those wind chimes the nice ambience at the beginning and but then there's also like a background noise that sounds like wind coming through like a a cave or something which yeah. made me think that it was like i don't know if it's trickery like you're hearing something beautiful while surrounded by darkness or if it's finding something beautiful despite being surrounded by darkness but the, it, like whenever the rest of the instruments come in the vocalist starts not singing words but it sounds like she's singing breaths like yeah she's doing like an in and out sort of thing and I didn't know if that was supposed to be, like, so I, I honestly couldn't figure it out. I, I, did, <laughs> I didn't know if it was supposed to be, like, they're trying to come back or they're, like, getting overwhelmed with how they're feeling or what. But that, Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, the song's called Siren Song, right? So yeah. it's, it could very much be that she's literally a siren that's trying to, like, lure him in into a place that is maybe maybe she's luring him into hell maybe he's on his path he, judgment has not been passed to him he's still floating through the afterlife and she's like hey like i'm gonna sing very sweetly and very softly and that's where all like the happier the nice elements are in there but it's it's coming from a dangerous place which is maybe where that kind of offsetting kind of ominous tone kind of lingers through is that he's, he's kind of seeing through it but not really because he's distracted by all of the the happy and the, and the beautiful woman serenading him saying hey come come with me kind of thing. <laughs> come with me if you want to live come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> i mean maybe that's what it is maybe the terminator's a siren plot oh, twist <laughs> holy shit nobody saw it coming <laughs> <laughs> not even philo himself not even the turtles saw that coming exactly in the turtle seat everything including the title of track number 11 turtles turtles is the, is the title <laughs> <laughs> that was a stretch and i don't that was actually beyond a stretch that was literally just me i, I liked it thrusting turtles into a sentence but... <laughs> i thought it worked perfectly <laughs> but yeah this one it it kind of it extends that kind of serene feeling of it it, it feels kind of monastic to me like it, it, again kind of returning to how i said in the theme where there was like this kind of temple like east asian temple kind of feel to it kind of brings some of that back there's some like dainty finger symbols that, that kind of chime through there's some very muted bass and some dull like bongos kind of a thing going on there's birds chirping and, and angels kind of singing and, and serenading so this is where i was like okay if the last track he, he died and he went to heaven then this is where he's kind of like settling in, right? Yeah. He, he's realizing that he's in this paradise. However, after what we discussed with Siren Song, maybe he's just succumbing to 
the the song of the siren as it were and he's just being completely blinded and led by the the serene angel yeah i th- i think that could be it like i i don't know how to i had a clear idea with what's on the next song and i was kind of just like i listened to this turtles and siren song several times trying to figure out what the through line between uh the terminator and <laughs> and the next song were <laughs> yeah and that sounds like it makes more sense cuz i couldn't i was i figured this was like building upon the nice sounds in siren song and i didn't know if it was heavenly or kind of uh tricking trickery yeah. or whatever but that that would make sense yeah i, I kind of like this and i also kind of like track number 12 ready or not i'm just gonna <gasps> say it i think it's my favorite track on the album oh it's, okay it's, i don't know there's something about it that it's got it's, it's very like bloopy and, and tiktoky with the drum machine but it's got this warbly muted <laughs> sound and it, i love that sound it's, it's cool as shit i really yeah. like it a lot I think maybe at, at this point, because you kind of alluded to this when talking about turtles, this is a point where it, it kind of takes a turn because it's a bit ominous and there's some like weird sound effects sprinkled in. So I kind of feel like the prior tracks, at least when I was writing my notes, was like, okay, he arrived at the gates of heaven, right? He's not allowed into heaven yet. And this track, he's in some sort of purgatory, right? Where he's waiting to be judged. Mm -hmm. which maybe it's not the case because of what we just discussed, but it kind of feels it it, with the, the weird sound effects, it kind of feels like maybe he's sitting in some sort of waiting room kind of a thing that those like sound effects, because they're like chuckles and and some other weird noises and stuff that happen where it's kind of like, okay, those are other people that are also just waiting. So I feel like this is him waiting to see if he's getting into heaven or not, but, because of the whole siren stuff that we, we just discussed, I'm not really sure where that leaves the song. Yeah, I, I could see it being a purgatory or something for sure, because this song, like, it's it's got a completely different tone. It's like, it, I love that warbly sound. Like, it just sounds so nice, and it feels dark, but not in, like, a sad way, more in, like, a mysterious way. Yeah. Like, this song feels like unexplored territory, which would make sense if it was entering a purgatory, like your past, whatever underworld or whatever level of yeah. consciousness that you had now and you're, you're in a different area and you're experiencing kind of like the depths of your consciousness, maybe like you are about to be judged or you're trying to think about your life or something is that's kind of what I got. So it would make sense for it to be like a purgatory type yeah, situation. And I think, I think the next tracks also kind of like, imply judgment is, is being passed mm-hmm. so like i don't know it, it feels right but also I'm, I'm still trying to like figure out if there were a siren right there's a siren song I, I should probably think about this more after the podcast but like where where would she be leading him from and where is she leading him to if it's just to purgatory like where was he i guess if not like in a better place kind of a thing where he's just kind of like wandering th- maybe maybe this is implying the afterlife is in stages and you start off when you die, you're just in a void kind of a thing. And you're, you're not really anywhere, I suppose, but that's kind of like purgatory, but then you're kind of like, you can, you can remain where you are in this void, but there are other places you can go. And the place that he was lured to was perhaps this kind of purgatory area awaiting judgment. I don't know what the other directions would have been from said void, but Maybe that's how I'm rationalizing all of those now. Yeah, I I think that could be right. Because, I mean, I would think of, uh, like, purgatory, maybe, like, a limbo-type situation. And then... Are limbo and purgatory the same thing? Like, I don't... In my mind, they are, but there's probably a distinction. Yeah, I don't... I don't know, man. There's too many... There's too many afterlife situations <laughs> to think yeah. of. And I just never think of any of them. Me too, man. <laughs> I live my life just being, like... <laughs> whatever man <laughs> yeah you just you keep your eyes above and your feet below and keep living life and worry about it as it comes to you hell yeah and then i listen to track number 13 eyes above hell yeah yeah nice segue <laughs> <laughs> this song i zoned out on completely the first time i listened to it while oh i was my like God. writing my notes and i did not write anything for the song like, <gasps> i sat down 
to like listen to the album as I usually do and then go through track by track and I write notes as I'm listening to the song. But when this one hit, I just zoned out completely because it's so like it's such a vibe this track yeah. that I, I didn't even realize it until the track was almost over i'm like shit i haven't written anything i'm just kind of enjoying my my time here in this track there's a lot of like percussive elements happening there's a really cool like phone dial tone kind of thing and a bass pattern that kind of kind of play with each other the lead melody from the keys comes in it's very soft and smooth and everything in this track just kind of like transitions so quickly and smoothly that it it, it feels hard to describe like it's kind of some weird dream light state kind of a thing where um, I thought at this point this was in in the story where his number had been drawn metaphorically, like if he was in this waiting room or purgatory waiting to be seen by the judge of his fate, this is the point where he's like he he's been chosen and now he's walking towards you know the doctor's office to, yeah. to be seen, kind of a thing. Yeah, I I definitely feel that. That's kind of the the idea that I was getting, like he was awaiting judgment. I mean, it is called eyes above, like the yeah. eyes above are judging, looking down upon you are going to be like, and that phone ringing could just be like, it's, that's kind of what it starts out on. It sounds like uh, an alarm or something. Yeah. And it still feels very like unexplored territory. Like you'd be hearing this sound if you were like lost out in a forest maybe. And then there's like, kind of these hay sounds like people saying hey or so, like trying yeah. to get your attention it sounds like not necessarily like they're saying words really but it sounds like people are trying to get your attention in the background and then the drums are like they have this fast-paced thing going that could be like your your anxious your anxiety right. kind of but i, li I like it because you're nervous you don't know if you're gonna go to heaven or hell yeah, it's just that moment of hesitation before the judgment is passed that you don't know what's going to happen. The moment before track 14. The the moment of hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, the, the chugging snare that you were, you were talking about kind of returns in full force here. And you can tell there's definitely some anxiety about awaiting the judgment of a higher being of sorts. The saxophone kind of flutters about. And I feel like maybe the judgment was made and the kind of chaos that then sues in it is the protagonist being dragged off to his final destination. Like he, he failed the test of judgment and now he's being dragged to hell or something. So he's freaking the fuck out. Yeah. I kind of got that. Like it wasn't a, uh, wasn't a peaceful judgment because yeah, it, it was does... not a desirable outcome. <laughs> no, like it's, it's, uh, it, yeah, it's cause I mean, it, it starts out on like an almost somber note and it's still got, yeah, like mm -hmm. you said, the drums, and then, yeah, whenever it, uh, whenever it's got like this cool, like fluttering horn saxophone thing going on that just makes it sound like uneasy. Like yeah. he's just like, oh shit, what, what's happening? What, what just happened? There's no way to undo this, this judgment that has been passed on to me. Yeah. And he's freaking the fuck out and he's, he's kind of descending into some sort of madness as he's like trying to, trying to rationalize his, his life sentence. Or Des unlife sentence. <laughs> Descending all the way to track fifteen, descent uh, into madness. With this is this is one that credits Thundercat because he yeah. does some more vocals, I guess, more prominent vocals than the choral stuff and the bass tracks that he's been playing. But yeah, it's got some very like subtle fiddle that, that I hear kind of underneath some otherwise kind of lovely strings, and then the song takes a turn and it's like, yeah, yeah, he's definitely going to hell. <laughs> the, that I got. the vocals are kind of like oddly cheery. But the music is anything but, and there's some like nice big booming percussive hits, and it just sounds very big and and, and loud and like it, he's definitely going to hell is what what I got from it. Yeah, because Thundercat's voice is like like you said, it's almost cheery, but like it's in the way that like you'd hear like the crazy villain in a movie or something be cheery, and you're just yeah. like. Or, like, somebody who's just completely lost it. It's like, like, the executioner is walking towards you with an axe, kind of, like, mocking you as he's coming to drag you away, kind of a thing. Yep. And I, I gotta hand it to Thundercat, man. I like your voice. Like, I, I like all of his songs. I know he's not necessarily, like, the best singer, but I like his, I like his <laughs> voice. Well, you don't like people that are good singers. You only listen to music with singers that are bad at singing. I listen to that lord's first album and i liked it she's a pretty good singer <laughs> she is she is K kudos on finally listening to that you know a year and a half later or whatever. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> it's been a while 
Just like the boys who died in their sleep. They've been a while. They've been sleeping a while, I guess. <laughs> they sure have. Track number 16, the boys who died in their sleep. Featuring I, I Captain Murphy. Yeah, so why why does he feature himself in the track? I, like, why does he make that distinction? That I have no idea. I guess it's just like a... I don't know, because... I can't say I, anything. I, I, I take it back. I cannot pass judgment. J. Cole does the same damn thing, because he, uh, on at least KOD he features himself as kill edward yeah but and i think mac miller used to do the same thing as well and uh i've not listened to any mac miller but well maybe we'll do that at some point i think levi wants me to he probably does because some of it's pretty good but yeah maybe maybe we'll do an episode with levi and and talk about mac miller that's hey levi let's do an episode Levi, if you're listening i i doubt you are but if you are hi he's most certainly not (laughs) (laughs) Anyways, The Boys Who Died in Their Sleep is track 16. It's some really, like, sad and strange kind of vocal track, and it reminds me a bit of Childish Gambino's Awaken My Love, just the kind of aesthetic of it, I guess. It's got some, like, soft and smooth keys that quickly get overwhelmed by some very, like, twisted and maniacal vocal samples of, like, demons chanting in your ears kind of a thing. And you can hear someone trying to catch their breath at the end as if they're running. So I'm not really sure if that's, like symbolizing him running down some dark hallway like like in a prison maybe and all those chanting noises are just like other inmates kind of like watching him as he's freaking out and trying to get out of there or whatever but uh the lyrics kind of lend the theory that like he's kind of trying to rationalize what he's seeing it, it's he's talking about like overdosing and stuff so i took that as like he he's in denial at at this point where he's like no i'm not actually dead this this isn't this isn't what's happening really what happened is i'm i I took some drugs and i'm just tripping i'm passed out i'm just having this out-of-body experience it's not real because the last thing the last real thing he remembers was taking some pills so he's kind of like trying to step back through everything and basically like trying to pinch himself to like wake him up from the dream kind of a thing is what i got from it yeah that's also exactly what i got like i didn't because going through it the first time i didn't know if it was about like he had intentionally tried to kill himself and that's what he's realizing. Like he had tried to OD and then he's like thinking back on it and like, that's why I got the judgment that I got or something like that. Yeah. Like, uh, or if it's realizing that he had tried to, was trying, doing, he was achieving a death-like state while still living, trying to escape his problems in real life. But yeah, I I ended up coming to a conclusion pretty similar to yours where he was like fighting it after, after the descent into madness, after like it's the denial part of the stage of grief, I guess. Cause he doesn't want to be dead. Yeah. Which I mean, I guess if you were uh, conscious after death, you probably wouldn't, I don't know. (laughs) Maybe, maybe I I guess if you were getting dragged to hell, you'd probably be like, (laughs) no problem trying to fight it for sure. (laughs) Please no. <laughs> <laughs> I have no way to segue to this next track, Joey. Uh, well, we'll just leave some obligatory cadence before. Although we don't have any cadence if we leave silence. So <laughs> 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 awkward. Track seventeen is obligatory cadence. I feel like I've been talking a whole lot of this album. I've not let you take the tracks. So have well, you know it. what? I'll take this track because uh, it starts off with some like swelling strings, but uh, the forefront kind of has this alien sounding synth like i don't i don't know how else to describe it it Mm -hmm. sounds very foreign and uh i mean the cadence part is very on point with how it opens and but it ends up having this pretty slow feel once the drums come in which is kind of against all of the fast drums that have been going on and all the fast paced everything like the drums in this one are the the part that keep it kind of slower feeling yeah Uh, there's like some background vocals giving some nice ambience there and it it really just kind of like this song is about three minutes long and i feel like it keeps the same general feel throughout like there's been a lot of songs where it starts off in either a really fast-paced jazzy section and it ends in a chill section or like vice versa but this one kind of it actually keeps the same feel throughout the end or throughout the whole track it's a very eerie track for sure yeah i think that that synth that you called out is i think it's a theremin a theremin? I feel like it's very similar, if not, it, it, but it definitely has a kind of like mysterious, eerie alien vibe. 
to it, which is why maybe that's why I think it's a theremin, just because it's always associated with that kind of thing. But yeah, I, I feel like at this point, narratively, the the character is maybe in like some sort of cemetery or like a spooky forest. It just kind of gives me the sensation of like walking alone down a path where you're like just like lost in thought about what's happened and he's not really like paying attention but it's it's not a very like bright and cheery situation and i I thought maybe this is just like him being bummed out because he's finally accepting that he's dead kind of a thing like man this is this is this is where i'm at now and there's nothing i can do about it i 100 percent agree like i think this is the acceptance as bitter as it may be i think this is the acceptance of the judgment of the death of where he's at now this is just like it's like well this is it this is what eternity is gonna be like i guess (laughs) (laughs) yeah which uh, is it's not great especially when you feel like you you haven't lived up to your potential right when you when you're going to face the beyond you want to be at your peak right you don't want to die when you're in a, in a low spot you want to you want to go out on top right you want to go out listening to track number 18 Hell your yeah. potential the beyond but i was that was great you got both parts of the yeah, title i nailed it double so it was pretty <laughs> fucking sweet honestly <laughs> but yeah this one's a bit of a reprieve from the doom and gloom you get the kind of return of the angelic voices and some other brighter elements of earlier tracks it still feels a bit sullen and then it kind of goes into this weird like dreamlike state like he's being transported into like an alternate reality for a moment, or maybe just being shown a glimpse of that alternate reality where he was in a better place kind of a thing. I think with the track title, it could be implying that he's being shown what he could have been, right? Had he gone a different route in life, if he hadn't done all of the negative things, or if he had had been a better person, right? I don't know who would be showing it to him or why at this point in the story, but... That's that's what I was getting. See, I this one, since I didn't say it, I mean, this one is the one that I had talked about earlier that actually features Nikki Randa. Yes. She's the female vocalist. Uh, but this song, what I got, it has one lyric, and it's "Love had a name, and I called it to you." Mm-hmm. And to me, that was like somebody who's still living, calling it out to the beyond, and like. It's trying to say that your potential is now with the people that you have left on. Like that, like the people that you have left behind, the impacts that you made on them, that's your potential at this point, I guess. And they're calling out to you. Just that lyric made me think that with the last song being the acceptance, this is the completion of the moving on process for the deceased. And now it's the people left behind that are beginning their own, I guess, cycle of grief. Like, they're calling out mm. to you, like, I don't know, like, love had a name, love right. was their, the the deceased name, and now they're calling out your name. I like that. I, I, I'm i trying to work it in, because, <laughs> so I guess we can just go ahead and wrap up the, the narrative here. Track number 19 is the protest, mm-hmm. and for me, the protest, it, it kind of narratively shifted, I think. And that, like, this at this track, I was like, okay, well, maybe this is from the perspective of people back in the real world accepting the protagonist's deaths and moving on, which would track with what you were saying while keeping him in memory kind of a thing. Alternatively, though, I was kind of thinking maybe in the in the prior track, in your potential, he was maybe given a second lease on life, right? Where someone came and was like, no, like, we're going to give you, we're going to give you a do-over, right? And now he's kind of, like, waking up and he's he's kind of trying to make changes but given the pacing of the rest of the album it kind of seems unlikely that the last two tracks would just reverse everything and and cram in some sort of like redemption art kind of a thing and then i was like well maybe maybe he was never really dead and maybe he's just waking up like this is this is him waking up at the end from his like drug-induced coma dream thing and then carrying on as if nothing ever happened because it kind of returns back to to a sort of normal vibe i suppose so there were there were several theories I had as to what was going on <laughs> towards the end of this album, but I, I never really nailed it down. Well, my theory, uh, I don't know, just the different feel of this this track, like this whole album, it's been very like electro jazz fusion heavy, and like it's still kind of the case here, but this one is more, it feels more instrumental than, right. but yeah, uh, I mean, it has like some very like lovely clean piano, yeah, and. 
that's like that with being with having the the sole lyric of we will live on forever and it's kind of like ch- not chanted i guess it's just sung like yeah. by i don't know I, like I a also choir. Put chanting so. yeah <laughs> like i don't because i mean it is just repeated for a little bit but uh i feel like this is everybody has accepted the death i guess mm-hmm. and it's it's a protest in the sense that even though he's ex- the person who has died has accepted their death they are now realizing that it's not a true death because they like have a legacy that's going to yeah, continue living like death of the body is only part of the process there's memories and the impacts that you've had on other people they live on that like the dead are never really gone and once everyone involved accepts that it becomes kind of an easier process to live with as you can then live with the memory instead of live living remembering or right. wishing for the past or something yeah instead of living in grief and yeah and denial i guess you're kind of kind of ready to move on but not in like a negative connotation of moving on just like getting back to to their life while having like while still holding and cherishing the memories that were made I suppose. yeah because it's like a new section i mean you really start living a new life once somebody dies i mean you they say moving on but i mean you don't really move on you just kind of like learn to live with the new right. state of life that you have now yeah so. right i mean it, it's not like the 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 memories get wiped from you as soon as you yeah. so maybe life would be better if it was but yeah uh, I mean, who knows feels disrespectful to everyone that's died <laughs> I, I don't fucking know man my mom's dead i can make statements like that it's, yeah it's whatever i mean you have a unique insight on it that most people <laughs> don't have so <laughs> yeah i'm not saying i want to forget my mom though just to be clear <laughs> yeah i, I wouldn't but, assume that. but i mean but maybe, it might be easier yeah, for the living people for the living like, people if that happened but uh yeah i don't know overall I really dig the vibe and the narrative aspect of the album. I like a lot of the instrumentation and the grooves. And every time I listen to this album and still like, even up in, until now, like I start off not being into it because it's so like frantic in the beginning with the, the kind of jazz fusion stuff. But over the course of the album, it really grows on me and I end up enjoying it. by like the halfway point, probably well, before cool. that, maybe like 25% point. Cause there's fucking 19 tracks, but uh, <laughs> I kind of feel like because there's more of that kind of chaotic jazz electronic fusion stuff at the beginning than throughout it, I was thinking that maybe it's representing the kind of modern world that the protagonist lived in mm-hmm. with the kind of like electronic elements symbolizing, you know, a sound of the future kind of thing. And then the jazzy elements giving it kind of like a bigger city vibe kind of thing. So like maybe the character lived in some like weird future city kind of a thing but maybe it's just me trying too hard to connect the terminator to all of this <laughs> i mean i can see it like it does have a it has a definite shift in sound as mm-hmm. the album goes on so i mean like i could definitely i i feel like that has to be something so that could something. be it John Otis, <laughs> if you're listening to this <laughs> send us an email explain your album to us please don't. i had a lot of fun trying yeah. to like interpret this Again, like the first like four or five tracks, I wasn't putting a lot of thought into it because it was just like overwhelming chaos. And then as I was finding myself enjoying it more and more, then I would like try to tie everything in together. So I, I really enjoyed this this album as an experience, even if I'm not like in love with the album musically, I suppose. So it was, it was a good pick for sure. Well, hell yeah. That's what I like to hear. You know what I like to hear? Next week's album? Next week's album. <laughs> Next week, we are going to be listening to uh, a totally unrelated album. I didn't really know what album I was going to do until we started uh, talking tonight. <laughs> and uh, I picked the the album Razzmatazz that came out last year from the band I Don't Know How, But They Found Me. Also what shortened a name. to IDK How, because that's a lot to type out to say I Don't Know How, But They Found Me. But yeah, <laughs> very cool album. That's what we're going to be listening to next week. So you guys stick around. Uh, let us know what you thought of Flying Lotus. If you have any interpretations and, and a better story arc for fitting the Terminator into everything, please let us know in the comments or whatever. Otherwise, uh, we'll see you next week. Stay in our feedback loop. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>